What's up guys? I'm here with Ben Gammon. Ben's been a friend of mine since about 2016 when we started the uh, real estate investor meetup group that we've got. And I've, uh, we're at one of his properties. I've learned a lot about this property just in hearing you talk at some of our meetups and it's fun to actually be here and walk through it. And I can't wait to peel through some of the uh, before photos of this place. Sure. So give us a little background. When, like, what year did you buy this place? And um, what, I mean, what, what would we be standing in right now before you got your hands on it? Yeah, so uh, I bought it in the, uh, in the uh, winter of 2016. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, moved here uh, from California in January of 2017. Uh, the property was abandoned for about five years. Uh, I personally peeled off a uh, oxycodone uh, prescription that was uh, all attached to a oh, wall. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, in order to bring it up to HUD standards, they had to um, put in some new windows, and they just hired the cheapest and worst labor. And so, so this was a HUD uh, government subsidized house housing. Yes. Five years, at least five years before you bought it, because nobody lived here in the meantime. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So what kind of condition was a property in that had been vacant for five years? It was rough. Uh, all the wires had been pulled uh, in the basement and then HUD came through and put in all new drywall in the ceiling. So when I was walking it, I didn't know that. So wait, somebody came in and stripped all the wiring out of this? I'm guessing they sold the copper for drugs or whatever. Yes, exactly. And you didn't know it because everything was covered up. Right. Okay, surprise, surprise, right? Yeah, it's just part of one, <laughs> one of the fun things you figure out when you're when you're peeling oh, back the later. I also didn't know there, there had been a flood, and what looked like a new boiler had a giant gaping hole in the side because it froze. Um, so that was an added expense. Um, but yeah, it was in rough shape. Uh, there was like holes in the walls. You could see from the bathroom and through the kitchen into the living room. Uh, they had just taken all the old cabinets and all, um, all the old windows and thrown them in the backyard. Um, and everything was just really overgrown. So uh, yeah, bought it for 48000 um, Sounds like a deal, but in 2016, that was before the market really started ramping up. It's 2022 right now, so we've, I mean, we're right now, I would say still at the peak. Yes. All right, I mean, prices are still way up there. So 2016, you picked it up for 48. Yeah. And I'm guessing you did some analysis before you bought it on how much money you were gonna have to put into it. Of course, yeah. So, um, you know, I come from a real estate background. I had my broker's license in California. Mm -hmm. I did eight years of property management, uh, read all the books and, um, you know, studied up on that. And then I think it was just looking at a ton of homes. So I looked at probably about a thousand homes before I pulled the trigger on this. Yeah. Holy shit. Tons. Was, did and you it make just, offers on any other ones other than this one? Yeah, several. Okay. Um, and then uh, that all fell through. And then luckily my dad was doing a cross country driving trip and uh, he was like, hey, I'm gonna check out some homes, I'm driving through there. And I said, this one? And he said, if you don't take this, I'll take it. And if I don't take it, the agent will take it. And I said, great, let's hop on a plane, let's go check it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then uh, put in my offer, and uh, I think nobody else bid on the property, so. So were you planning to move to Cincinnati before you bought this place? Yeah, so uh, the whole plan was move to Cincinnati from California. So move from a, a cost of living area where the median home price is over a million dollars. Right. To the median home price at the time was about $200,000. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a option to pull out uh, because I was getting my master's in business through University of Cincinnati. So I said, do this gamble. If it doesn't work out, I can go back home with my tail between my legs with a master's and I still have something to go home with. All right. And it's worked out. So, okay, so you picked the place up for 48. You've, you've crunched some numbers on, on what you're gonna need to do for this place. Sure. And you'd planned to live here the whole time, right? Yeah. We're actually in your apartment right now. Yeah. And the rest of the building essentially is rental income. So it was super rough when we first got here. The gas wasn't set up or electric or water or, or um, anything. And then everybody wants to take advantage of you. So I had a I had a I had a plumber come in and he saw my California plates, and he's like, Oh yeah, the gas lines are, they're super messed, man. We got you got to redo all of them. And I'm like, Oh shit, man, that's expensive. And he's like, Twenty thousand dollars. I was like, 
I bought it for 48, so I'm not putting 20,000 into it on that pipes, thing. right? And he's like, well, for 5,000, I'll run gas lines through your staircase. And I'm like, that doesn't sound right to me. Right. Uh, and then so I, I finally uh, got a contractor and he's like, dude, all we need to do is just tighten up these little spots on it and we're golden. Um, so that was a nice intro to uh, being in construction. Right. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was super rough. Uh, we were staying in Airbnbs. Uh, really rough Airbnbs. We ended up getting bed bugs uh, while in the Airbnb. Oh man! Uh, and then um, when we moved in, it wasn't it was habitable, and that it had utilities on this place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but there was it wasn't rehabbed yet, so we were still living in the HUD standard uh, cabinets, where if you open the kitchen cabinet, you can see into the into the um, into the bathroom. Oh. You, the window didn't shut in the bathroom so you could feel a breeze while you're taking a shower in the winter. Gotcha. Um, and uh, it's funny, I like tell my now wife, girlfriend then, hey, I've done a great job. We tiled the bathroom. She's like, great. She comes over, wake up, and uh, I put the door back on and it won't close because I didn't take into account the extra half inch from the, from the concrete board and the tile and the mortar. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, Okay, and I just like took the door and leaned it against <laughs> for some privacy. But uh, yeah, when we when we first moved in, it was super rough still. So we didn't even have heat set up. So I literally just took a tee off of the oven, put it in the living room like right here, and then had two series of uh, a box fans to try and rotate three heat through the building. But when you're not heating the basement or any of the other three units, it uh, it's pretty cold. So we we uh, our Standard protocol then was we would just sleep with beanies and two layers of, of down blankets and just make it through. And we had a propane heater in the in the bedroom on really cold nights. That's a crazy story because at that point you were pretty damn committed. Yep. To making this thing succeed. I mean, you were already you already bought the property. You'd already started renovations, and you were kind of at the point of no return, right? I mean, I guess yeah. you could probably just sell it and get out of it what you got in it, but. Um, I mean, it's come a long way. You've got new windows, the roof looks new. Um, so if you don't mind me asking, and we'll probably cover this on the show, um, you're in it for 48 to buy it, right? Yep. That bought you the bricks and the land. Yeah. All right. So about, what, what would you say the building's worth today? Uh, well, uh, it's worth uh, 283,000. Did you just have it appraised? I did, okay. it sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> so 283. Um, assuming you've got some equity in there mm -hmm. at this point, you don't have 283 in the building, so that's nice. You kind of did a full-on value add. Um, obviously, you occupy one unit. You probably don't pay yourself much rent. Nope. Uh, however, you know the other three units are occupied. But before you um, rented them out long term, you had Airbnb here. Right. right? So did you, like, I guess, what are the Airbnb restrictions around here and how did the Airbnb process go? Because you had the Airbnb right above you. I did, yeah. Um, uh, Cincinnati is actually pretty friendly to, to Airbnb. Um, and so, yeah, I uh, just read up on it a little bit and then uh, went ahead and got all the, um, all the furniture all on sale. Um, you know, uh, there's little tricks to it like you can go and buy a used um, used mattress, and then you just put a cover on it. And bam! It looks like a brand new mattress. Right, because most people don't, you know, peel everything back and look at what's underneath. Right, so. you do a deep clean on it with yeah, with, with a shampoo carpenter, um, you know. But yeah, so um, the rent uh, rents um, the pro forma on this property originally, and this is I was interested in the property at the, at these numbers. It was 500 for a one bedroom and 750 a month for a two bedroom. And this property is two one bedrooms and two two bedrooms. Okay. Uh, today, uh, it's um, I'm getting a thousand for the one bedroom. Okay. And I'm getting 1,200 for the two bedrooms. Nice. Um, which is on the higher end of this uh, uh, of this neighborhood. Um, and then for the Airbnb, my best month I got over 2,000 a month. Nice. And it was only one bedroom too, so it's not like you're packing 10 people in there. It's no. just, you know, two to four people at the most. I did get that one time. I got, I, I got people, it was 10, it was eight people in a one bedroom and they left a baby unoccupied. Get out of here. <clears throat> and they showed up at 3 a.m. drunk as hell, pounding on the front door. And uh, that's when I was like, yeah, I think, I think I'm done with this. You're done with the Airbnb stuff. 
Yeah. You know, there's, uh, you know, I've got an Airbnb, and we, you and I've got friends with Airbnbs, and there's always that one thing where it's like, yeah, this isn't a passive investment. It's, it's not. It's a job. Yeah. So, so I see it similar as like, uh, as like doing uh, se Section Eight, right? It's like when you are the um, property owner, and then you're having a conversation with your renter. It's you two having the conversation. Mm -hmm. When it's Section Eight, it's you two, and then you're like, "Wait, wait, who's this guy?" <laughs> it's the government. You know, it's the government. And you're like, "Oh, he's he's huge. That's an ogre." Like, and I feel like that's Airbnb too, because you're all after that that five star review. Because yeah. if you're if you're even at like four point three stars, you're already out of the picture. Right. Um, and so you really do have to bend over backwards to make it like an amazing experience for everybody. Sure. Yeah. Now, um, as long as I've known you, you kind of, you, you march to the beat of your drum, right? You, you, um, you kind of listen to a lot of other landlords out there and kind of use the, kind of the guardrails and stuff, but I'm sure you do things your own way. Sure. Talk to me about your rental qualifications, right? If you go to, um, put the, put a apartment on the market for rent, what are you looking for as a landlord? Obviously, you're living here, so it's not just like you're just renting it out to somebody who's just going to stay in a building that you're not attached to. Right? Sure. So what are your rental standards? Yeah, well, so that goes into the philosophy of why I do hire and finishes, um, because my thought process on that is that I'm going after a certain renter profile. Mm -hmm. And so if I want that renter profile, I have to know the market and know what, what attracts them. And so that's why I have granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, um, you know, undermount sinks, um, and also that allows me to be more selective with my renters as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I actually had to adjust because uh, originally I came from California, uh, Silicon Valley area, where I was like, credit score is 750 or higher, and people were like, that's not, that's not going to cut it here in Cincinnati. Really? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, so credit score, what about pets? I mean, you just fixed this building all up. It's, I mean, obviously you're a dog guy. I'm a dog guy. Uh, I, I actually do screen pets. I'm okay. extremely thorough on my screening. So having eight years of property management experience really comes in handy on that. Right. And it's all about the screening. So I'm super, super thorough on my screening. Uh, and I tell them that and I say, and it's amazing how many times you say, look, I'm super thorough on my screening. If there's anything I should know. Tell me now. Tell me before I run your background credit. Right. <laughs> and also I say, look, I, I can't get you that money back. If, if And people are so forthcoming. They're like, well, I have a felony from a month ago. And you're like, well, maybe you should save that money. Right. Um, save your application fee. Yeah. So one story on that is I had this, um, I had this couple and I screened them. I looked at their car. I screened their pet. Uh, everything's checking out. And there are this... Um, ethnic couple and they have a they have a baby that's going to be due soon and uh and then i'm like man everything everything looks great their the credit's great there are no vacancy no no evictions um and their income's great and then he says hey man i'm a financial advisor i'm like okay and he goes so you know how that works i get paid like five times a week and i'm like that that's not how that works but uh Okay, that's, that's, that's a red so, flag. So a red flag went up right away. Yeah, and but but I'm um, looking at it, I'm like, ah, that's really weird. So then I look at the company that he's working for. Turns out, and I really had to dig, and to get to like the third page on Google, it's a pyramid scheme. Ah. And he was just in that first three month period where he's tapped all of his aunts and uncles and grandmas. Yeah. And they're still living the dream. And they were like, so drinking the Kool-Aid, they were wearing the shirts and the hats and everything. And if it weren't for being thorough on screening, they would have been in here and that would have been a nightmare. Do you do you ask for pay stubs or bank statements or anything from your renters? Of course, yeah. So um, I asked for uh, last three months of, uh, of pay stubs. Yeah. And then I asked for uh, their boss's phone number. I asked for their current landlord and the landlord before that because you never know if they're a bad renter and the current landlord. Like, yeah, yeah, they're great. They're great. Just get, get them out. I, I don't want them here anymore. For sure. Yeah. So um, you've been in this place, you said 2017, January mm -hmm. about is when you moved here and you started just peeling back the layers of the onion and getting everything done, right? Yep. So it's been five years now. Yep. Based on where we are today and where you started with this place, what's changed? If you were looking for an investment property, let's call it Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area. If you're looking for an investment property, what would you do differently? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would um, 
have a team in place and, and screen my contractors better. Okay. Uh, so, so when uh, you say team, you mean a team of plum plumber you can trust, and yeah. just the whole list of people who can turn wrenches on houses. Exactly. Okay. So, so you have your your carpenter, your mason, electrician, plumber, HVAC specialist, um, and then that's been a big part of the learning experiences. Um, uh, because I have my own construction company now, I act as a, a project manager and the, and the general contractor on my projects. And I'm a bit unique in that, in that I actually take an active hand on everything. So on everything on this project, I took an active hand on. So uh, just the, the, the um, what I would do differently this time is, um, is probably sub out more. Mm. Um, and that's uh, what I did on my second project. But I didn't have the money at the time. Right. And so it was bootstrapping everything. Uh, and so, you know, there's there's so many things that you get. So did you start your contracting company after you bought this place? Yep. So you kind of learned the trade through this place. Yes. Yeah. Man. It's so funny because like I grew up with a with a, a dad who was handy on the on the weekends or whatever, but like I had no idea looking back on it. Um, and you get lost on subtle, small stuff of like, should I buy 24 by 24 inch tile or 24 by 12 inch floor tile, porcelain or, or um, you know, whatever tile. And then you're like, it doesn't matter if it looks nice, it's a rental, you know, and then make it renter proof and um, do a good job of it, right? Um, but yeah, I had an active hand in everything. So, um, you know, doing the, uh, refinishing the hardwood floors, um, uh, doing the baseboards, new paint, did patched all the walls. Um, I actually uh, blew in insulation, um, uh, R60 ins insulation in the, in the roof, and then actually blew in insulation in between the walls to add more privacy. Sound dampening. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then gutted the kitchens and bathrooms because it was vacant for five years and it wasn't loved for before that right um, I knew there was gonna be some dry rot in there and so did a pinch of reframing in there and then um, did a all new HVAC uh, did some some new plumbing uh, found out where it was so wild I had a redneck uh, contractor working with me <laughs> and uh, we, we, I was like, I don't know how to tell. There's, there's a wire, and it's in one end of the uh, basement floor, and then there's a wire sticking out on the other end. And we were like, does this go to the fourth floor or the third floor? We need to connect it back to the panel. And he's like, I know how to do this. And he brings a generator and then just rewires it to the outlet and runs the current through the outlet. And then we can tell which one it leads from, from from the, four, from the second floor down into the basement, we go like, okay, this so is the bedroom. Yeah. yeah. But um, turns out that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to use a toner, which is a tool in electrician's work. And now that I've uh, done the rough and electrical for a full three unit building, I know how to do this. Right. But at the time, that's how we did it. But you, I mean, you've learned a lot of tricks of the trade just through this property. Definitely. Um, you probably learned how to save money on future deals, learned how to keep contractors out of your pocket. Yes. Because if somebody comes in and they're like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, let's 20,000 for a, a gas line job. Yeah. You know, now you've got pretty sharp skills on identifying what something should cost. Um, we will totally cover this on the show, but in your opinion, 2022, interest rates just went up. I think I just quoted, I just looked at uh, interest rates today for myself to buy a single family, and I believe at 20% down, it was 6.5%. Um, what are your thoughts about the market right now? I mean, where do you, where do you think we are, and where do you, do you have any predictions on, and I, be careful on making predictions, because we, we're all going to be wrong. Uh, but. Um, I mean, do you feel like now is the right time to be buying in today's market? And if so, like what? Yeah, just unload. I, yeah, I, I really think that depends on your investing philosophy. Mm. So if you're a buy and hold investor, uh, you know, I think you're, you look at your ROI. Uh, and if your ROI is you're like, hey, you know, my cash on cash return, my ROI, uh, I'm looking like I'm going to recoup all my costs in six months or three years or whatever it might be. Uh, if you're a buy and hold investor and you're just doing it for rentals, that might extend your time horizon. But still, if you're owning for 30 plus years, 
it's going to be a, 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 a um, you know a, a, a cash cow in, in the long run. Right. Um, so I, I wouldn't get too caught up in that if you're a buy and hold investor uh, on the on the on the uh, interest rates. I think if you're flipping, that can be more challenging. Yeah. Um, because you can get um, caught in a downturn, and I, I think we. Are we're actually going into the fall and winter season? And you see a seasonal drop in prices, mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think it'd be a great time to. And that might be a better time to, to purchase. Um, and then I think we'll see a, a bit of a dip here, but I, I don't think it's going to be a massive dip. Anything like 2008, I think you're going to see a correction. I actually wrote a 30-page uh, um, business plan uh, as part of my business school. Um, MBA uh, on Cincinnati, and if you look at Cincinnati, it doesn't have these giant. Uh, I'm happy to share the, the graphs with you. Yeah. These giant um, curves in appreciation values, like other competing affordable uh, housing markets, like uh, your Atlanta's, Miami's, Phoenix. Um, we're in the Rust Belt, so it's slow and steady, and you had a 10% instead of a 50% drop in 2008 right. through 2011, 2012. Um, and so that's one of the benefits of being in this market is I think you're gonna see a lighter drop um, compared to other compared to other markets. So, um, you know, I don't think it's gonna be a, I think it's gonna be 10% or less. Yeah, I mean, what we're seeing right now, as far as multifamily goes, like if, if an investor is looking to buy something for a long-term buy and hold, there's nothing out there yep. and it's I mean you know just as much as I do because we're in similar circles everybody's looking for something yeah. and everybody wants a deal and there's not a deal to be had out there and people end up overpaying there's people coming to Cincinnati to invest from California New Jersey Californians look well, it's the cost of living right yep. it's like you can't afford to buy a duplex in New Jersey yep. it just it, it none of it does not make any financial sense because there's just so much uh, demand for it. So I think there's two things on that. I think one is the secret is out on the Midwest and mm. the Rust Belt. Yeah. And so what you have is you have on the coast, you have a lot of international money that's going to invest in there. Um, and then you have from the coast, a lot of coastal money that's, um, I have a friend. Uh, I'll tell you, when I was looking at this property, I was literally touring a $800,000 knockdown. Um, yes, yeah. it's funny to hear that somebody spend you know eight hundred thousand dollars and just tear it down. It's even worse. There was a house I helped with. It was a, a '50s ranch uh, bungalow. It listed for one point five in Palo Alto, which is where Facebook is. Mm -hmm. uh, in a week, it sold for a million over asking, two point five. This was in twenty sixteen. And that was in order to knock it down and then build on it. So they're paying three hundred thousand, uh, three million just for the land, just for the lot. Yeah, uh, or two point six. But um, yeah, so you can see why <laughs> when they look at this market and they go, you know, home price two hundred fifty thousand. Oh man, I'm, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy a whole block. Sure. Um, and then the other thing that I think is not going to change is you have Wall Street that's that's pushing in, and so you have your Blackstones that are. Uh, competing in parts of the market that traditionally you didn't have larger investors competing in in those same single family homes. Uh, I, I think that's the more challenging part. Sure, yeah, the hedge funds come in and then they just make it tough for local investors to pick anything up. Cool, man. Yeah. Looking forward to talking more about it. Yeah, man. I appreciate Thanks for it. the tour. Yeah. yeah, man. All right, guys. Ben Gammon just gave us a tour of his four unit that he put his heart and soul into. And uh, we're going to have him into the studio to talk about philosophy on rental, uh, tenant profiling, and hopefully can help some other landlords out there. Uh, he's done a great job keeping maintenance on this building. He's a great landlord. Hell, I'd rent from him. <laughs> so look forward to having you in, brother. Sounds good.